What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod, and with Simon Tech once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at Halo Wars 2 and its PC performance with various graphics cards ranging from the RX 460 to the RX 480 and its NVIDIA counterparts. Along with that, we're going to be taking a look at the individual settings and how you can adjust them to get better performance out of the game, so stick around. So to start things off, the test bench is going to be an i7-6700K overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz and that it's mated to an MSI Z170 SLI motherboard with 16 gigabytes of Corsair memory and that's clocked at 2400 megahertz and of course it's going to be running on a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. That's going to be the OS as well as the game itself. Powering all of this is going to be a Thermaltake 850 watt gold rated power supply and it is a fully modular power supply as well which makes it kind of handy especially when testing games well when testing graphics cards i should say the benchmark run is going to be on the mission the signal and it's going to be right after the first checkpoint and you're going to have a warthog that's going to jump down a cliff and then you're going to want to highlight the warthog then press alt zoom out the camera all the way and then align the camera horizontally with the path once you've done that you're just going to drive down the path until a cutscene is about to start. Essentially it's right after you jump off the cliff with two tanks right on the other side of you and you drive up in between them. Big explosions happen and then you're good to go. You're just going to stop that benchmark before the cutscene starts for obvious reasons and then you'll have a pretty good run there and you'll be able to compare with us here. Now we are using present mon to capture. I did start trying to use OCAT or OCAT but it has issues with Windows um, I guess Windows Universal platform games to where it doesn't always capture all of them and I'm not sure why however it's based on present mon and I've built a installer for that and you guys can check that out here if you're interested and you can pretty much just run it and capture with the scroll lock and it'll capture it all and output it into a CSV file and then you want to take that CSV file and take the time between presents and run a percentile mark on that each time between presents is essentially going to be divided by or you're going to divide 1000 by the time between presents and then that'll give you your frame rate. Of course you're going to want to average these out and use percentiles depending on what kind of numbers you're trying to get whether they're min, max, or average. Now for me personally I'm using the first percentile and the 99th percentile for the min and max frame rates. So all of the settings are going to be pretty straightforward and pretty simple. We're going to be using 1080p and then everything is going to be cranked as high as possible. So everything's turned on, all of the settings are all the way up, and every everything is there except for the V-Sync because if you have V-Sync on then it's going to lock the frame rate at 60 FPS and we want to see what the maximum capabilities of these cards are so we avoid turning V-Sync on. And speaking of settings let's go ahead and talk about how each setting is going to affect your frame rate with this handy little chart that I've built up for you guys and it's going to be the percent change in FPS. So essentially you can gain or lose this this percentage of frame rate for each of these settings. Starting out with shadow map which you can get about a 10% gain or loss in depending on what setting you go with on there and you want to keep in mind that I kind of like shadow map turned on so it's really going to be up to you but that's one that's a little bit more uh, advantageous for playing a strategy game but bumping over to foliage detail you get about the same 10% gain or loss but the thing is is foliage detail in FPS doesn't really matter that much in fact less of it's probably good because it's less distracting from where the units are and then we have texture quality of course I like to leave this one on personally but you can get about a 10% from that as well and then finally the last one I really want to talk about is going to be anti-aliasing where I think this is going to be the first one you want to just go ahead and turn off and grab that extra 10% in frame rate you can go ahead and pause here and review the rest of the chart as you feel fit and let us know if you guys get similar results in the comment section below on to the good stuff who those 
wonderful benchmarks, fellas. Yeah, we have them all here. And like I said, it's ranging from the RX 460 all the way up to the GTX 1060 as well, um, or the RX 480, depending on what side you're on. And I actually did foobar the graph here a little bit. I'm going to apologize. It's been a busy week. And the RX 460 should be below the GTX 1050, as you can see the numbers here and how they translate. The rest of them are going to be in order from least performance to most performance at the top, but we're going to start at the bottom. So with the RX 460, we had a min frame rate of 28.1 with an average of 47.2 and a max of 65.6. Unfortunately, we're not quite getting that always above 30 FPS with ultra settings, but by just adjusting your settings a little bit and even just turning anti-aliasing off, which I already recommended, you'll have a 30 FPS playable frame rate on a $100 graphics card. NVIDIA doesn't shy away here with their $100 option either on the GTX 1050. They had a min FPS of 27 with an average of 52 and a max of 72.3. Bumping up to the GTX 1050 Ti, it had a minimum FPS of 39.3 with an average of 59.5 and a max of 73.2. I found all of this very playable in 1080p with all the settings turned on and that's a pretty awesome option for around a $150 graphics card. I would also assume that the 4 gigabyte version of the RX 460 performs similarly, but I don't currently have one in stock right now to test, so unfortunately we're going to have to skip that. But if you're looking for an AMD option that is around $164, you can get some 60 FPS 1080p gameplay with the RX 470, and it's going to be the 4 gigabyte model. Now, it has a minimum FPS of 68 with an average of 92.3 and a max of 108. Point one. That's pretty awesome stuff, especially at that price point. What I find odd though here, and I tried to figure it out and I retested a couple times, is I got quite a bit less on the minimum for the RX 488 gigabyte. Now keep in mind there are variances here and I was trying to stay on the explosions and something could have just happened every time I did it with the RX 480. I did try three times. I didn't get any different results so we went with it. I might do some research further into it just to see why and maybe it just caused some weird glitch with one of the explosions or texture packs or something that was throwing the min frame rate to uh, right at 60 FPS, which is also suspect. Um, I don't know if there's some sort of anti or not anti aliasing, some sort of V-Sync that's trying to take over or some sort of sync issue there. That being said, it does stay above 60 FPS on the min with an average of 105.3 and a max of 127.2. But Nvidia is going to take the big win here, guys, with their EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte, which is coming in at a pretty decent price point with a minimum. FPS of 81.3, an average of 111, and a max of 127.9. It's pretty good stuff, and it's really close to their 1060 for the win edition from EVGA, which had a minimum FPS of 94.6, with an average of 121.4, and a max of 140.9. In conclusion here, I think that it's pretty obvious to see that if you're looking at just 1080p 60 FPS options, I think the RX 470 coming in, especially that reference model from Sapphire coming in, at that $160 price point is just a hell of a deal. And even though Nvidia wins here, you're not going to get the 1063 gigabyte for that price at this point. So you, I don't know. Uh, it's just my opinion. Now, of course, if you are looking for the best or most performance, or you're looking for 144 hertz refresh rate, or you're looking for higher resolutions, you probably want to stick with Nvidia and go with a 1063 gigabyte or a 1060 for the win. Of course, in my opinion, opinion just because of the way other games are reacting to the three gigabytes I think just going ahead and springing for a six gigabyte model of any sort would be the best option for you especially for higher frame rates and higher resolutions in Halo Wars 2. Thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday.